India produces 20% of the world's data and we only have 3% of the world's data center. That gap that's about to create one of the biggest infrastructure booms India has ever seen. Ambani is building 3 gigawatts data center, Adani is planning for 2 more and the real estate companies that used to build apartments are now competing with Amazon and Google. This isn't about tech, it's about who controls India's digital future. And in the next few minutes, we are gonna break down exactly what's happening, why it matters and where is the money flowing. Because if you understand data centers, you understand the next decade of Indian business. Let's dive in. Before we talk about billions of dollars and corporate warfare, let's start simple. What is data center and why should we care? Here is the simplest way to think about it. You order food on Swiggy, send money through Google Pay and watch series on Netflix, post a reel on Instagram. Every single one of those actions needs to be processed somewhere, stored somewhere and secured somewhere. And that somewhere is data center. Think of our internet as a postal system. Your phone is sending letters. The data center is a sorting office where all those letters get organized, sorted and sent at the right place. If data centers shut down, your apps won't work. Your payment would fail and your videos won't load. Everything digital runs through these massive buildings filled with servers, cooling systems, backup generators and 24 by 7 security. Now, here's the crazy part. India has 900 million internet users. We are the world's largest data consumers and most of our data is stored in Singapore, US or Europe. We are cooking food in someone else's kitchen and that is the problem everyone is rushing to solve. Let's rewind to 2016. Geo launches. Suddenly data is almost free. India users explored from 390 millions to 970 millions. Average data consumption goes from 0.27 GB to 30 GB per month. That is 61% CAGR in data usage. But data center's capacity only grew by 20 CAGR. The demand exploded faster than the supply could keep it up. Why didn't we just build more data centers earlier? Because building a data center is insanely complex and capital incentive. One megawatt of capacity costs 35 to 60 crores to build. You need massive land, uninterrupted power supply 24 by 7, advanced cooling systems, fiber optic connectivity and backup generators. Plus, you need 40 plus approvals just to get started. Land acquisition alone can take up to years. According to Anand Raj CEO, it takes 3 to 4 years just to get started with a data center at a decent operational stage. So, the supply couldn't keep up with the demand. But now, things are changing fast. From 2019 to 2024, investment in Indian data center jumped from $1.5 billion to $60 billion. That's 1000 crores to 5 lakh crores in just 5 years. And here are the 3 big reasons diving this boom. Number 1. Government policy changes. RBI made it mandatory to store all payment transactions on Indian servers. Stock exchange, brokers, mutual fund companies, they all have to use Indian data centers now. Google Pay can't process your payments through Singapore server anymore. It has to use India. Number 2. Cost advantage. Building 1 megawatt in India costs 50 to 60 crores and in the US, Germany or even in China, it costs 80 crores or even more. Land, electricity, labor, everything is cheaper here. Number 3. AI and cloud computing explosion. Chat GPT, AI models, cloud gaming, streaming, they all need massive computing power. And that computing power needs to be close to the users for low latency. India is no longer just a consuming data, we are becoming a data infrastructure builder. And that brings us to the most interesting part. Right now, five companies control two thirds of India's data center capacity. NTT, STT, Control S, Sci-Fi and Nextra. Most of them are foreign players, except Nextra, which is a Airtel subsidiary company and Control S. But that's about to change because now Indian giants are entering the ring and they are not just entering quietly. 
Reliance is building the world's largest data center in Jamnagar. 3 gigawatts of capacity. For context, India's entire current capacity is around 1 gigawatt. Reliance is building 3x that in one location. And the cost? 20 to 30 billion dollars. That's 2.5 lakh crores. LNT, which has already built 50% of all data centers in India in the last decade, is now planning its own facilities. They are now investing 36,000 crores just to take their capacity from 32 megawatts to 150 megawatts by 2027. That are not small players testing the waters. These are the conglomerates going all in. But here's where it gets interesting. Real estate companies are entering too and their strategies is completely different. When we think of data centers, we think servers and technology. But underneath all that tech, it's real estate. Massive lands, buildings, infrastructures and security. And who understands land better than anyone in India? Real estate developers. Companies like Loda, Hiranandani, Anandraj, Mindspace, they are all jumping into data centers. And here's why it makes perfect sense. Data centers offers 22 to 28% returns. That's higher than commercial offices and residential projects. Plus, once a data center is leased, client stays in for 10 to 20 years. No vacancy issues like malls or office parks. It's high recurring, stable and high margin income. Let me show you three strategies these companies are using. Strategy number one, land banking and selling at premium. This is the simplest play. Buy land in strategic locations, wait for the right opportunity and then sell this to hyperscale players like Amazon or Google. Loda Group did exactly this. They bought a land in Palawa near Mumbai three and a half years ago. It was just valued 2.5 crores per acre and they sold 38 acres to Amazon at 12 crores per acre. That's 5x appreciation in just 3 years. And now that land is being valued 20 crore per acres by some estimates. Strategy number 2. Cold shell development. This is what Mindspace is doing. They build the structure, the building, power lines and cooling infrastructures. But they don't handle the IT side and they lease it to the co-location players or hyperscalers who install their own tech servers and tech. Low risk, recurring rental income and they stay in their land and real estate. Strategy number three, full stack operation. This is the bold play. Companies like Hiranandani's Yota and Anand's Raj are doing this. They are not just providing land or building. They are running the entire operations, server, cloud services, connectivity and everything. Anand Raj recently said that 40% of their revenue in the next four years will be coming from data centers. They are transforming from real estate company to the data center company. Yota has built Asia's largest tier 4 data centers in Navi Mumbai. They are competing directly with Google and Amazon and Microsoft. This is a high risk, high reward. But if it works, the margins are massive. And now here's the key insight. Real players have one massive advantage. That's land. In cities like Mumbai, land prices had shoot up to 6 to 7x because of data center's demand. Mindspace CEO said clearly, land that was 6 crores per acre 4 years ago is now 35 to 40 crores per acre. Nobody can buy land at that price and still compete with us on rentals. Land and building cost 15 to 20% of the total data center cost. So, whoever locks in land early has a huge edge. But is that edge sustainable? Here is the harsh reality. The same advantages real estate players have today might not last. Challenge number one, the giants are coming. When Reliance is building three gigawatts and Adani is building two gigawatts, the small data centers that real estate players are building start looking small. LNT has engineering expertise. Ambani and Adani have deep pockets and political influence. Telecom players like Airtel already have fiber networks. In the long run, data centers might become commoditized. Prices war could start and margins could shrink. Challenge number two, land is running out. Mindspace CEO said in their September 2024 earnings call, 
we are run out of land for future data centers deployment in Navi Mumbai. The golden land parcels are getting exhausted and the new land, they are expensive, 35 to 40 crores per acre. At those prices, new participants can't compete. Challenge number three, capital intensity. Hiranandani Gupta, CMD said in one interview, investment in data centers is 40% more than residential real estate. Not every real estate company can afford that. And this is not a game for small players. So what does this mean? Real estate companies will definitely benefit short term. Their land banks will appreciate. They will get stable rental income. Some will make excellent returns. But in long term dominance, that's still a question mark. The real war will be between the conglomerates, Reliance, Andani and l and those who can deploy gigawatt scale capacity. The real estate players might become suppliers to these giants rather than competitors. But here's the thing, even if they don't dominate, this is still a massive opportunity. If you're an investor, entrepreneur, or just someone trying to understand where India is headed, here's what you need to know. Data centers is not just a tech infrastructure, they are a strategic infrastructure. Countries that control data centers control their digital economy, just like ports controlled the trade in 1900s. India is finally building its own ports, and this shift is creating opportunities across multiple levels. For real estate companies, new revenue streams, better cash flows, higher valuation. For tech companies, local cloud services, faster speed, data sovereignty. For the economy, thousands of jobs, billions in investment, reduced dependency on foreign servers. For retail investors, new listed companies like Nextra. This is not the hype, this is the infrastructure built out at national scale. By 2026, India's data center capacity will double from 1 gigawatt to 2 gigawatts. That's just next year. And the players who position themselves right now will capture disproportionate value over the next decade. Real estate companies sitting on the strategic land, they are on the perfect spot. But they need to move fast. Because once Ambani's 3 gigawatt facility goes live and once Adani's park goes operational, the game changes. So here's the bottom line. India generates 20% of the world's data but only has 3% of the capacity. And that gap is closing fast. Real estate giants are transforming. Conglomerates are going all in and billions of dollars are flowing in this space. Data centers are the new gold rush and whoever goes in first wins big. If this breakdown helped you see the bigger picture, hit that like button and subscribe to this channel because we are tracking this space closely and trust me, the next two to three years are going to be wild. I'm your Deepak and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.